Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Brock Upside. Joker was directed by Todd Phillips and is about Arthur Fleck, played by Joaquin Phoenix, a man completely beaten down by society, which sends him on a dark path to becoming the Joker. So I just got back from the advanced screening for this movie, and I think it's pretty safe to say this is probably a lot of people's most anticipated films of the fall, or at least even the full year even, and I think it's just because it's taking the concept of the supervillain, giving them their own movie, but not trying to make him into the hero, you know, not trying to turn him into a good guy and save the day at the end of the film. You know, this is just a story about what would possibly take some guy to transform into this psychotic killer clown that we know from Batman comic books and things like that. And I think ultimately this movie does exactly that. This is a very well executed, dark, gritty character piece about seeing this character that just is fed up with society. He just goes down this really dark path. You know, it's something that just takes you along for this ride. And by the end of the film, you're gonna feel a little unsure about yourself at the end of it. Of course, Joaquin Phoenix absolutely kills it as a Joker. He gives one incredible performance as this character in this movie. You know, this is one of the beautiful things about this character is that we're seeing him not just as the Joker straight up or as some sort of Gotham City gangster. We're just seeing this ordinary guy go down this dark path to becoming this character. And Joaquin Phoenix just completely embodies what it would take to pull off a role like this. He lost an enormous amount of weight so he just looks horribly malnourished which just gives the physicality just that last little bit of perfection that it needed. It just gives his body language, his movements, this really rigid unnatural feel to it which does creep you out quite a few times throughout the film. His performance also does have a hint of Norman Bates in there as well because both characters, they're kind of mama's boys that slowly start to go crazy and do some horrible things by the end of it. You know, we meet this character at the very beginning, he's a down on his luck guy, society just totally rags on him, but when he goes out and does his job as a clown for hire, you can just see him totally transformed to the point that, yeah, you can tell he's the most confident when he's out there being a clown, you know, flipping signs for stores going out of business and things like that. You know, this guy gets beaten down at basically every possible turn, and as the story just continues to unravel further and further, you find yourself going down this really dark and disturbing path with this character, to the point that, at the beginning of the movie, you know, you do kind of feel a little sorry for him, you know, just this poor guy getting beaten down by a bunch of, you know, street thugs and stuff, but then, as things progress, you start to get more and more concerned to the point that you're absolutely terrified of this guy and what he might do next because much like the Joker that we all know and love, he's a very unpredictable guy and he does some things that you might even see coming but are still incredibly shocking and it's just another element of this guy turning into this iteration of the most famous Batman villain of all time, if not the most famous supervillain in history. You know, the Joker is not the hero of the story by any stretch of the imagination. He's not a hero in any way except maybe to some of the people that he ends up inspiring through his actions and things like that. This is not a character you're supposed to root for or relate to because if you do, that's a little disconcerting. You know, this is simply just a character piece about a man that finally snaps and becomes the Joker. And of course there are going to be comparisons made between him and Heath Ledger who arguably gave the most iconic performance as the Joker. And honestly I think the similarities between Ledger and Phoenix kind of stop at the physical side because you know both have the long greasy green hair and the makeup they put on every day. You know there's no there's no dropping into chemicals and going cuckoo that way. You know but aside from that they're really two different types of Jokers which I really like and I was a little concerned this might be a little repetitive of Heath Ledger's Joker because Heath Ledger, you know, he was more of a full-on Joker, you know, trying to bring a city down to its knees intentionally trying to bring the best of the city down with him and he had an army of minions and explosives and things like that but this joker is someone that just is fed up with society and he kind of almost accidentally starts a movement and wants to create change but kind of doesn't mean to per se so both actors have given incredible performances to this character 
Which one's better? I don't know. It's really too soon to tell because, I mean, for me, I just saw the film like two and a half hours ago. So the important thing is Joaquin Phoenix takes the character of the Joker and makes it his own, gives it another strong, fresh performance as the character. It doesn't feel horribly repetitive of other incarnations, doesn't feel like it's retreading Heath Ledger's ground. He really makes it his own. And for the movie they're trying to make, you really had to do that here because you really couldn't just put this in a straight up comic book universe universe with supervillains and metahumans and, you know, things of that nature. So this Joker works great for this movie and that's really all you could ask for. And one of the things I really like about this movie is how it handles Joker's origin story. Now, in the comic book world, Joker's never really had one solid straightforward origin story. You know, there have been different possible incarnations here and there and when you ask the Joker himself, he will probably change it up eight different times while he's talking to you about it. So when it comes to Joker aka Arthur Fleck in this movie, as soon as you think you've got Arthur figured out, the movie comes in and just turns the whole thing on its side, gives you some new information that makes you kind of question what else could be not exactly what you think it is. And that's one of the things I like about this movie is that it's not completely straightforward in giving you a Joker origin story because without getting into a lot of detail, there are certain moments in the movie where you think something is how it's supposed to be, but then the movie comes in and it's like, mm, not quite. Which I think was the perfect way to go about the Joker in his own solo movie showing the origins of the character because, well, to quote the man himself, if I'm going to have a past, I'd prefer it be multiple choice. And with the more grounded approach they take with the character in this movie, it leads to a more grounded film, of course, and that's where things just start to go really dark, you get really in-depth into the psychology of this character, and things just get really, really dark, but you don't lose the humor there as well, because, of course, the Joker is a humorous character, he will tell some jokes that you'll probably feel bad for laughing at because it's at other characters' expenses. There is a lot of dark humor in this movie, which I personally loved. I'm a big fan of dark humor and combining dark humor with the Joker with an R rating, it just makes for the perfect combination of things. You know, the dark humor just gets progressively darker and darker as Arthur slowly starts to go crazier and becomes closer and closer to becoming the Joker as he does more screwed up things as the film gets to the conclusion. And he starts to do some really awful things that once you see him, it's like, yeah, I can definitely see how this movie earned its R rating and that's just one of the great things about the movie. I feel like I keep saying things are great about this movie over and over again but it's really true is that this movie is R rated so it pulls no punches, it gets bloody, it gets violent, it does the things you would expect from the Joker in a much more gruesome and fricked up manner, and while you're just sitting there watching this two hour character piece diving deep into the psychosis of this character as he slowly becomes the Joker, you're gonna begin to forget this movie takes place in Gotham City, it takes place in some sort of incarnation of the DC Universe, you know, Thomas Wayne, Batman's dad, plays a pretty big part in the movie, you get to see young Bruce Wayne in there as well, so in that way it accomplishes what the Dark Knight trilogy did in its own way, making it just this gritty dark movie that just happens to feature comic book characters. You don't feel like you're watching a superhero movie because that's really not what you're watching. You're just watching this guy become the Joker, a character that we associate with, you know, Batman and superhero stuff. But it's just taking it and just turning it into something that could almost happen in the real world. You know, there is so much more I want to talk about with this movie, but I really can't do that without getting into spoiler territory. Just things I want to talk about as far as, you know, the Joker's past, different plot twists, and just other different things from the comic books that feel like we're present here. So, but that's gonna have to wait for a spoiler review because I really don't want to spoil it a couple of days before the movie actually comes out. But basically, if you couldn't tell, I'm absolutely floored by this movie. Movie. I loved every second of it. So really, I don't have anything, any major flaws with the film, but I do think it's important to mention that, you know, 
this movie's not gonna be for everybody. You know, it's a very different type of movie. There's no set, solid protagonist. It's not a hero versus villain story. But I think if audiences will come into this movie with an open mind, you know, they just wanna see something a lot different from other comic book movies we get nowadays, then I think people will have a good time with this movie and really start to appreciate what they're trying to do with this character and why giving the Joker his own solo movie actually works really well because it sticks to him being a villain they're not trying to turn him into a hero that's you know out there to go find another bad guy no this is just about the Joker becoming the Joker and what kind of consequences would happen to the guy himself as well as Gotham City so you might not like this movie which is totally okay you don't have to like everything everybody else does but if you just want to see a comic book movie that's not really a comic book movie that takes one of the most famous characters of all time and and gives it a new spin but still stays faithful to the comic books and the source material then I think you'll have a good time with this movie and if also if also if you really wanted to see the Joker finally do some really bloody messed up kind of kills you're gonna be in luck so all in all Joker go see it just just go see it even if you end up not liking the movie, just go check it out. I feel like everybody should at least see this movie one time. If you love it, great. If you don't like it, if you don't like the direction or the style, that's okay. But I feel like everybody should see this movie at least once. Just give it a shot. You know, form your own ideas. See what you think about it. And if this movie turns out successful, we might see more comic book films like this. Or just newer takes on characters like that. And uh, I think that could be pretty cool. So those are my thoughts on Joker, I highly recommend you check this movie out. But anyway, if you guys have seen this movie, or if you plan on seeing it, or if you're wondering if the next time you see a clown on the street he's gonna start causing the city to delve into complete chaos, tell me about it down below, and we'll see you on the Brockup side.